Hello, everyone. <laughs> Had some trouble there getting started. Let's see what my pick. There we go. Can you hear me? Testing. Today, we are going to talk about strumming. Thanks for being here. My name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar. We're going to get started right now. And uh, we're going to go over a couple of songs. I'm going to go over I'm Yours by Jason Mraz. It's kind of an old song now. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Drive. I did a, a video on Drive a while back. Thank you, Edgar. Yeah, I like my guitar. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I did a, dr a video on Drive. I released the guitar video about that particular song. There's a link in the description for those of you that want to see uh, exactly what we're talking about today because I talk a little bit about the strumming in that particular song and I'm going to talk a little bit about that right now. Also, I'm Yours, one of my most popular videos on the channel from, gosh, 2013. So how old is that? Nine years ago. It's a little bit old. I think I might need to update that, but it was really, really popular back, you know, years ago. And uh, the Jason Mraz tune. We can talk a little bit about that too. Hello, Dean. How are you this morning? Good to have you here. I know Bob's not going to be here. He's got a game with his son, so he's not going to be able to make it today. All right, so I got to get a couple things just adjusted. This mic for one thing, my guitar for another thing. And let's just dive into it now. I'm sorry it's been a little bit uh, longer, but my name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar, and we're going to talk about strumming today. Now, when you first get started playing the guitar, it's important that you learn how to just play chords and clean up your chords and figure out how to play them and that kind of thing. If you're going to be singing and strumming at the same time, like, well, you done done me and you bet I felt it, right? You've got to learn how to play the chords. And then you have to learn how to strum very uh, simply and find out where the beat is like well you done done me and you felt I felt it that kind of thing uh, let's see the next chord is I tried to be chill but you're so hot that I melted I fell right through the cracks and so what you want to do is you want to learn how to be uh, simple on your strums at first and later on you can get more ex uh, more complicated and get excited about it. I was going to say that. So uh, there's videos on strumming and that kind of thing. And sometimes people will ask me, what strum are you doing on that song? Well, it's not a matter of just what strum am I doing, but what is the, the feeling for the strum that we want? For instance, if I do, if I play, I'm yours. Well, you done done me and you bet I felt it. I tried to be chill, but you're so hot that I melted. I fell right through the cracks. And I'm a trying to get back. Right? But I could do it this way. Well, you done done me and you bet I felt it. I tried to be chill, but you're so hot that I melted. I fell right through the cracks. And I'm a trying to get back. Before the cool done run out. That's a little bit more complicated, isn't it? Because I'm using bar chords instead of just open position chords. Also, I'm playing it in a different key than Jason Mraz played it because he played it in the key of B, I think. Well, you done done me and you bet I felt it. But I'm playing it in the key of G. It's easier for me to sing. Let's talk a little bit about strums in general. 
So when you play a strum, if you just play a, a strum with the whole, uh, let's say strumming all the strings all the time, this is what it sounds like. Well, you done done me and you bet I felt it. I tried to be chill the nice clock that I melted. Fell right through the cracks. And I'm a to get back. I'm exaggerating a little bit, aren't I? I'm just trying to hit everything, even with that D chord. It sounds terrible. Because some of the strings do work and some of the strings don't work. So when you're learning how to strum, uh, let's pull up, you know, I don't have the, let's see here. Let me look at some chords here. Okay, let's let's look at this G chord. <laughs> Keep running, running into this. So when I'm playing this, here's the G chord that a lot of people learn when they're first learning to play guitar. And it looks like that. Uh, there's another G chord that people learn. And this is a G chord that I love to play. I actually play it with this finger up and I put this finger on the A string so that it mutes like that. So uh, those three chords, right? Those are six string chords and you can play it like that. But if you place all six strings all the time, it gets really boring really fast. So you don't just want to do that. Um, I'm gonna put it into uh, the song I'm Yours in just a second and show you what I do. <coughs> Let's go to the D chord really quick. Okay, on this D chord, you'll notice that there are two X's on the low E string and on the A string. Now, the D string is open, and then there's this triangle looking chord right here, just like that. If I try to play all the strings, sounds terrible. It sounds horrible because this low E string is not part of the chord and the A string is not part of the chord. So sometimes you'll see people put their thumb over the top like this. I do that. Sometimes I'll play it with my pinky. I'll play with these three fingers, my second, third, and fourth finger, and put this finger on top and actually mute those two strings with this finger. Or I'll put this thumb over the top just to get those four strings, okay? Lots of buffering. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know how to, how to do that, but uh, hopefully it'll figure itself out. It says that I've got a pretty good uh, stream, so anyway, maybe that's why I lost some people here. Oh yeah. Anyway, okay. So the D chord. Let's look at the C chord really quick. Here's a C chord. Okay, so the C chord, that low E string, that can be part of the chord. It, it would be a C with an E bass when you do that. but you don't want to hit all the strings all the time. All right, this is what you do. What I like to do is I like to take the low strings and separate them from the high strings. So I'm gonna use a G chord, a regular G chord. D chord, E minor chord, C chord. I'm going to turn that down just a little bit. D, E minor, C. It's 
So I'm hitting the bass note first, and then the top string. D note, top strings. Low, high, low, high, C chord. Now what I really like to do on this uh, song is I like to play it with a bar chord. So what I do here, here let's move the camera. So I'm going to focus on my right hand. I hit my low strings, my bass notes, and then the top strings. Like that. So it goes something like this. Well, you done done me and you bet I felt it. I tried to be chill. Oh, it's a D chord. I tried to be chill, but you're so hot that I melted. I fell right through the cracks. So I'm going bass note, top, 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 bass, top. This is kind of a reggae feel. to do is you want to practice as you play your chords. Play your low notes and then play your high notes. And let those low notes ring. Here's the D chord. C chord. Let's look at drive. These are the chords I'm going to be using. A minor 7. Looks like this. Looks like that. C major 7 looks like this. You'll notice that on the A minor 7, the low E string is not being played. That's this low one right here. We don't play that one. So I'm playing my A string as the bass note. The C, I've got the C as the bass note right there on the 3rd fret A string. I'm not playing the low E string. The E minor like this. and then the E minor 9. Oops, I did it wrong. There. Like that. So there's my E minor, and then I've got these two fingers. I've got my third finger on the E string, second fret, and the fourth finger on the B string, third fret. E minor 9. So what I'm going to do there, I'm going to play on my right hand. Let's take those chords away. So E minor, E minor 9, C, A minor 7. So you'll notice what I'm doing here. C major 7, A minor 7, now if I play everything, all the strings all the time, it sounds like this. It sounds terrible. So what we want to do is we want to separate the low strings and the high strings. What 
I'm doing here is I'm playing either the low E string and the next string together, and then playing these notes right here. What I like to do there is play that second fret, which is the B note in that E minor 9. And then I play the C note right there. Oops, wrong chord. A, when I play the E minor 7, I'm playing the A note. And then it's really nice to do this, this open, open D string to a hammer on to the second fret. See that? So when I'm separating those low notes and high notes, it sounds really good. Sometimes I feel the fear of uncertainty stinging clear. And you put a voice on top of it. It sounds really cool. So this is an alternate way that I played drive. And you can look at my video uh, and uh, search it on my, on my channel. Uh, and see that how you actually are supposed to play it. But this is a, a way to play it if you're not very good at the chords the way that Mike, I forget his last name, uh, plays it. So that's a little bit about how to um, strum and make it sound professional. Really, so if you're not very good at that, you need to do this. Do it really slow. See that? See what I'm doing there? So just practice working on these techniques very slowly and take your time. And if you're not very good at strumming, just practice a regular strum. Some kind of a strum, you know, like down, 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 up, down, up, or down, down, up, up, down, up, and get really good at strumming. You'll notice that I can strum and talk at the same time. That's because it's really automatic for me. And then I can switch between chords, right, and keep strumming the whole time. Those are the first skills that you absolutely need. So do that, and then uh, start to refine your strumming. Now I'm doing this one, two, down, down, up, one, two, down, down, up, one, two, down, down, up, one, two, down, down, up. is I'm separating those low notes and high notes and letting that hold out. I'm doing a different <laughs> chord progression now. And that really isn't a song. It's just a bunch of chords together. All right, that's what you need to do to be more like a pro. Thanks for being here. I hope this is okay. I got a message saying there's lots of buffering. And uh, I'm maybe I'm going to have to change my my uh, the settings on my OBS that I'm that I'm uh, streaming with. We'll have to just see. I'll try it again. Thanks for coming along. I appreciate all you guys. You can watch this, of course, from the beginning to the end later if it's been buffering and if it looks terrible. Uh, it'll be put all together on YouTube in I don't know an hour or something like that. All right. Thanks. I have a subscribe star page. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. Subscribe to the channel if you like my content. You can search it on YouTube. Anything you want to know. Like if you want to know something about a G chord, just put G chord and put Quail Studios or put Halstead, my name. And in the description you'll find uh, my name and you'll also find uh, different ways to donate to me and to get my book. All right. Got a theory book. Got chord books with 90s, over 90 songs in it. All right. 
We'll talk to you later. Take care, guys. Thanks. Thanks.